This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. So why do seagulls live near the sea? Because if they live near the bay, they'd be bagels. Welcome to Wings and Things, where you'll find real answers to real questions about everything you want to know about pet birds. Care, feeding, bird products, travel, and more. Everything to make your frequent flyer a happy camper. From parrots to parakeets, cockatiels to cockatoos, you'll have a bird's eye view of everything there is to know about your fun, feathered friends. So, spread your wings and get ready to fly with your Wings and Things host, bird expert and author, Susan Chamberlain. Welcome to Pet Life Radio. I'm Susan Chamberlain, host of Wings and Things, where we're all about pet birds. In this segment, I'll answer some pertinent parrot questions. Roberta Fabiano and her mitered conure Ratchet are here to help. Roberta, welcome back to Wings and Things. Well, thank you for having us once again, Susan. Okay, may we have the first question? Okay, here's the first one. I have a lovely adopted 24-year-old double yellow-headed Amazon parrot named Crackers. He is very sweet and will eat almost anything I give him except for most veggies. I am worried because he prefers fruit to vegetables. His basic diet is a formulated food and he favors the green pellets to the other colors. I give him fruit in the morning and vegetables like corn, peas, peppers, and spinach, broccoli, and carrots in the afternoon. How can I be sure he is getting all the nutrients that he needs? I love him and I want him to be healthy. Bird nutrition is so confusing. Please help. Well, Roberta and listener, reader, viewer, um, I have a 30-year-old double yellow head myself. Her name is Cracker, and I've had the same problems with her over the years. It appears that you're already feeding your bird a nutritious diet. Although exact nutritional requirements for all species are not known, formulated diets, such as pellets, provide much of what your bird needs when used according to directions. There are many ways to entice your Amazon to sample additional healthful foods, and this goes for other parrot species as well. Polly see, Polly do. If you have more than one bird, a finicky eater will often mimic a bird that eats a broad-based diet. Place your poor eater next to the bird that eats everything. We'll work for food. Birds are accustomed to working for their food in the wild. String chunks of firm produce onto a skewer-style rod feeder. Use an ice pick to make holes in chunks of corn, peppers, and apples to make that easier. Suspend the rod feeder from cage bars and watch your pet investigate this new way of dining. Small birds, such as budgies, parrotlets, and lovebirds that neglect fresh offerings from a dish may gnaw enthusiastically on firm produce clipped to cage bars. There are also toys and receptacles that encourage foraging behavior. That's um, one of the latest things going on, encouraging foraging with your pet bird. So look up some of those toys and uh, special feeders that birds have to work to open themselves and uh, encourage your bird to forage and experiment. If your bird refuses raw vegetables, try offering cooked versions. Bogart, my Red Lord Amazon, refuses raw carrots but loves cooked ones. Unlike most birds who eat to live, Bogart lives to eat, (laughs) so I rarely have a problem coaxing him to eat anything. None of my birds like raw cauliflower, but they do enjoy it steamed. Conversely, they turn up their beaks at steamed broccoli, but relish it in its raw state. Go figure. Cut vegetables into different shapes. Bert, my African gray parrot, refuses carrots cut into chunks, but he enjoys nibbling away on carrot sticks. Figure that one out. That's wild. I know. Ratchet's the same way. Is she? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, she is. I bird sit for Ratchet. I, right. I see what she does. Mm-hmm. Um, my bird sitter says I spoil my birds by cutting their grapes in half. Oh, I do that too. Now I'm cutting it in threes. Oh, okay. Yes. Well, you know, it, it, it gets them to eat them. And if you use vitamins on your bird's produce, then it gives it a moist surface to stick to as well. Right. It's not going to stick very well to a grape skin. Mm-hmm. Resist the urge to peel everything. 
Going back to the avian work ethic, my Amazons like to peel their produce themselves. Peas in the pod, apples with the skin left on, orange chunks with the rind, banana rounds with skin, cooked potatoes with skin, and similar foods entice my parrots regularly. Wash all produce thoroughly before offering it to your pets. Should you wash it with, uh, uh, you know, chlor not, you know, pure water, uh, um, you know, filtered water? Well, usually plain water or filtered water mm -hmm. is fine. After you wash it, you'll want to wipe it off with a paper towel because mm -hmm. that will reduce even more um, pesticide residue mm -hmm. or organic residue that's been um, deposited on, on the skins mm -hmm. during handling and growing. You know, insects lay their eggs on plants. Right. Uh, the produce is picked by people. And and it's also gone over in the store by mm -hmm. people with their hands. So mm -hmm. you, you don't really know what's on there. So it's a good idea to wash everything well. There are special <laughs> produce washes that you can use to um, reduce even uh, more bacteria and organic material on the skin. Or just use a solution of white vinegar and water if you're particularly concerned about this. Or just plain water and, you know, rinse it, wash it, wash it well. Don't just give it a couple of drops of water and then pop it in your mouth or your bird's mouth. It's, it's very important to be sanitary. Okay. But check out the frozen food department in your local supermarket, too. My birds enjoy colorful vegetable mixtures that may include lima beans, peas, corn, carrots, red peppers, celery, and string beans. Cubed squash, sweet potatoes, bean mixtures, and other nutritious foods are also available frozen. Cook and cool a portion for your birds. Make sure you cool them to room temperature because overheated food can burn their crops. Oh, right, right, right. I, I actually prefer to do the frozen because yeah. I'm not home that much. No. I can't. Every time I buy the fresh produce, it, it doesn't last long. It rots because I'm not here. Right. For so those of you who do not know, Roberta Fabiano is a musician, so she travels a lot on the yeah. road. Yeah. And check out her bird song on robertafabiano.com. She wrote a song about the wild parrots of Telegraph Hill. It's right on there. It's called Dogan, Connor, and Tubelo. But anyway, Roberta does travel, so... The frozen food certainly makes sense, especially when yes. you just have one bird. You can buy it in bags and twist tie the bags right. back up and put them right. in the freezer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can fool some of the birds some of the time. And I regularly get some additional nutrition into my picky hook bills by cooking finely chopped broccoli florets and grated carrots into scrambled eggs or egg or those egg beaters, you know, the egg substitutes. That's a great idea. And um, you can grate them into muffins, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, and good the muffins. birds will get it. Yeah. yeah. Those are good. So that really works. Mm -hmm. And, you know, does your bird love pasta? Mine I make, does. <laughs> <laughs> I make parrot primavera for my birds by adding steamed beans, peas, zucchini, peppers, and other vegetables to angel hair pasta. And a sprinkle of hot pepper flakes spices the dish up enough to please their South American palates. Unbel you know, I have a question for you, Susan. Okay. Doing so much for your 10 birds, how do you have time to do anything else? <laughs> you are amazing. Well, actually, you know, I've had, I've had my birds for quite a long time. I um, got Cracker and my male Senegal in 1980. So I've had 27 years of parrot parenthood. You might say I grew up with my parrots. So you have, <laughs> it, <laughs> you have it down to a science. Then. You kind of do. You get yeah. it in a routine. Yeah. And, and, you know, when, when you're getting the vegetables ready, when I buy a head of broccoli, I wash and cut up the whole entire head of broccoli. I put it in a covered dish in my refrigerator. That way it stays fresh for the birds and it stays fresh for me because I'll use that same broccoli for my dinner. Mm -hmm. And you know, you just buy it every few That's days. Great. That's great. So it, it you kind of get into a routine, right. and you get a little more efficient at doing something. Mm -hmm. If you're cutting up carrots for your birds, and you're going to have carrots for dinner that night, you know, cut yours up at the same time and put them but in. It's, the... it's funny because I have one little bird, mm -hmm. and it seems like it takes me more time to do that 
than it takes you to, to take care of 10 birds. Oh, yes. not really. Well, for me, anyway. <laughs> I'm slow. Well, you know, I mean, speaking of efficiency, um, what I um, replied to this person that yes. sent the question in, share your dinner. My birds love to eat when I do. I make a special dish just for them. You know, no feeding your bird off your plate or out of your mouth. Maybe right. you think it's cute, but um, we have germs that aren't natural to them. And um, with that special dish, you know, I dole out portions to all the birds as I sit down to eat. Mm -hmm. And when my dinner isn't suitable for the birds, you know, if it's too salty or if it's got mayonnaise in it or, you know, otherwise something that they shouldn't eat, I treat them to some of that um, parrot primavera pasta and or maybe some ready to cook bird food. You can get that in your bird store. There are many formulas mm -hmm. um, available and it all helps to enrich the diet. Uh, veterinarian Charles Greco of the Animal Medical Center in Center Reach, New York, sees a lot of birds in his practice and advises having your bird evaluated by an avian veterinarian if you are concerned about nutritional deficiencies. Um, he said, Amazons have a tendency to become obese, so the first thing I'd do is weigh the bird. Next, he said, I'd check the skin to be sure it's a healthy pink color rather than yellowish. A good physical exam combined with a full blood screen to check liver and calcium levels can help rule out fatty liver disease, which is common in Amazons. And for further reading, there's a book called Feeding Your Pet Bird by Dr. Petra Bergman, B-U-R-G-M-A-N-N. -N. It's published by Barron's Educational Series and is available in bookstores, at pet stores, in bird supply catalogs, and through online resources. So That's always have your know. bird checked by a vet for mm -hmm. nutritional deficiencies. Well, let's get on to another question. Okay, here's the next one. Uh, who, do we name the people who sent these in? or? Uh, no, they're kind of anonymous. Okay. You know, they um, okay. didn't want to have their <laughs> names published. So okay. we'll, we'll respect their privacy. All right. Well, here is our next person. She's from or he's from uh, Arizona. They have a problem worthy of dear Polly. <laughs> okay. Rather than dear Abby. Oh, I see. There you go. <laughs> All right. Her husband, oh, so it's a woman. Her husband repeatedly cleans the floors using strong solutions of pine cleaners and bleach. And she is concerned about the effect of the resulting fumes on her birds. He also persists in using a paper with colored print on the bottom of the birds' cages, even though she insists on using only black printed newspaper on the cage bottoms. Because she travels for business, she relies on her husband to take care of the birds in her absence. Oh, I feel her pain. <laughs> <laughs> Many of us have to hire bird sitters to care for our birds when we're away, even though our spouses are at home. <laughs> that makes sense. True, yeah. Yes. Reluctant or incompetent oh, yeah. partners are a problem, mm -hmm. as are overzealous caretakers. Spouses, children, and housemates who simply don't listen to our instructions yep. are really a cause for concern. Mm -hmm. Is the woman's husband mixing the bleach and pine cleaner together? We don't know that, but we do know that mixing chemicals is extremely dangerous to humans as well as pets and should never be done. Use all cleaning products in well-ventilated areas, especially those products that contain bleach, ammonia, pine oil, or other ingredients that produce fumes. Always dilute cleaning products with water according to package directions and read and heed the caution notices on labels. You're correct in assuming that fumes and chemicals are, that are potentially harmful to humans can also be detrimental to birds. Because their respiratory systems are so complex and sensitive, they are more quickly and easily affected by fumes and droplets from aerosol or pump sprays. As far as training your husband is concerned, ma'am... <laughs> You That's another show. <laughs> <laughs> you may need to resort to a bit of subterfuge and pre-planning. Save a few empty bleach bottles and fill them with dilute solutions of bleach and water. One part bleach to ten parts water is sufficient for sanitation in most household situations. Substitute the bottle 
of diluted bleach for the full strength bottle before you leave on your next trip and you'll reduce the intensity of the fumes before felix <laughs> even begins washing the floor if he's like most people, he won't interrupt his cleaning routine to dash out and, re and purchase a replacement bottle of bleach, if he even notices the difference. Right. Cleaning products containing pine oil frequently contain petroleum distillates, which when heavily concentrated can be harmful when inhaled. Use pine and citrus oil cleaners diluted according to the manufacturer's instructions and only in well-ventilated areas. Never ever spray these or other chemicals in rooms where birds are present and do rinse off the um, pine oil residue. Mm -hmm. oh. And explore other options for your cleaning needs. Peruse the avian supply ads in Bird Talk magazine for sources of bird-safe cleaning products. Avitec Exotic Birds markets Avacene, an odorless 20% chlorine dioxide product that does not require rinsing. Mm -hmm. You can visit Avitec at www.avitec.com for more information or check my bio page for other mm -hmm. websites. Mm -hmm. And you know, men love gadgets. Your husband may enjoy using a steam cleaner like the one offered by Vans of Louisiana or other companies. Check it out at www.vannsoflla.com. Vans of Louisiana. Vans of Louisiana. Yeah, they, they make cage covers and they market a steam cleaner. Although most ink now used in newspaper is non toxic, old habits die hard, and I still avoid using the color sections in my birds' cages. When I have to go out of town, I solve my cage bottom paper dilemma by pre-cutting a pile of paper to size and layering it in the cage trays. I add enough layers to allow for two sheets to be removed each day. A spare pile of pre-cut paper near the cages makes it easy for a substitute caretaker to replace it in cage trays when necessary. You may also be able to purchase pre-cut cage tray liners in your pet bird specialty store. If your husband is as fastidious as, you, as you've described, he may be delighted at its neat appearance and ease of use. Okay. Well, that sounds good. And you know what I use for small cages? Mm -hmm. I just, uh, like the birds' travel cages, I just tear off a length of wax paper and put it in there. Oh, that's a great, Travel yes. cage you tray. Tell me that. That's a great idea. Yeah, it resists moisture, too. <sighs> Sitting on a branch overlooking the parking lot, the pigeons watched as a Mercedes pulled in below them. What do you think, one bird said to the other. Should we put a deposit on that car? Stay perched. Wings and Things will be soaring back right after these messages. What if you could protect the life of your cat with something so simple and affordable that you already use every day? Get ready for the evolution of kitty litter. It's Kitty Litter. Along with all the features you've come to expect from your kitty litter, Pretty Litter's patented and scientific formula will also monitor your cat's health and detect illnesses early while providing industry-leading odor control. Two kitty litters, same cat, same price. But there's one important difference. Pretty Litter reacts to your cat's waste by detecting health issues simply by changing color. And the key is that Pretty Litter detects these issues before your cat shows symptoms of physical illness or pain, likely saving you major dollars in vet bills while protecting the health of your cat. What do you think, little guy? Ready to switch litter? Pretty Litter. Colorful insight into your cat's health. Go to prettylittercats.com forward slash cat 101 or use coupon code cat 101 to get 20% off your first subscription order. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. A Frenchman walks into a bar with a parrot on his shoulder. The bartender asks, where did you get that thing? The parrot replies, in France. There are millions of them. Don't have a canary. Wings and Things is back with more great words on birds with your host, Susan Chamberlain. Okay. We do have another question. We do. Okay. Um, here it is. Is there a nonstick cookware product that is safe to use around birds? I was in a warehouse store and watched a demonstration of nonstick cookware. 
They said several times that it is bird safe. How do I know for sure? As a matter, uh, as a matter of fact, I don't really know if stainless steel is safe either. Maybe we should just eat out. Now that sounds like a plan. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> you know, if if the products coated with polymers containing polytetrafluoroethylene, um, known as PTFE. It is not safe for use where birds are present. And most nonstick cookware and appliances are coated with polymers containing this PTFE. In-store demonstrators may not know the correct technical information about the products they're promoting. Contact the manufacturer directly for clarification. Stainless steel cookware is safe to use as long as it has not been treated with nonstick polymers and you do not burn the contents. Smoke inhalation of any kind can be deadly to birds, humans, and other species. Yeah. And, you know, finally, I, I think we, can, we can't say that enough. It, right. It's very important for well, everyone to know. I would highly doubt that someone that works in a, you know, a store that's other than a, a, a pet store or a bird store would know that a bird is well, allergic. Yeah, well, it's it's a little more than allergic. Yeah, it's, meaning it's, deadly. They're sensitive. It's um, it's it's deadly. They're deadly to the um, yeah. fumes emitted from those polymers, and it's just um, odorless and colorless. And well, I know someone. I had a friend of mine whose bird died from this, and he came home. He was a musician. Came mm -hmm. home. He was uh, working on a on a score, and he was boiling some water mm -hmm. or something in a pot. And he had a, 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 a conure at home, I think. And uh, next the, thing you know, it, the, the water boiled away. It boiled dry, the, yeah, yeah, very so common. he forgot about it. Mm -hmm. And his bird passed away. Yeah, you well, it, it, it's, it's a terrible thing. And, yeah. you know, it does affect humans also. It's called yeah. polymer fume right. fever. Yeah. And wow. it has um, it has flu-type symptoms. Oh, People wow. just think they have the flu or really? a virus. Yeah. Wow. But in severe cases, you know, your lungs will bleed. Oh, my gosh. So think about that. Yeah, you know, it's it, it, awful. if it's killing birds, what is it doing to us? Whoa. So just to forego all nonstick cookware. Yeah. You know, use, um, use stainless chance, right? steel, use mm -hmm. corning ware, use glass, use aluminum. Well, she, she wanted to know, whoever wrote this question, yeah. uh, how do we know that stainless steel is safe? Well, stainless steel is safe. Stainless steel is does not produce fumes when it is heated. Uh -huh. I mean, likely, if I don't know what would happen if you put it into a huge furnace and melted it and uh -huh. inhaled those fumes. Right. But the uh, under you know household use, stainless steel is fine. But if you have something in it that's going to burn, that is going to produce smoke. Right. And smoke in any form can be deadly. Okay. Also, if your stainless steel pot has a plastic handle and it's in your oven and you turn the oven on, it's not the stainless steel that'll produce fumes. It's the oh, plastic that will um, produce fumes. So, you know, don't store your cookware in your oven. I think we have time for one more question. Okay. So, finally. Finally, uh, let's see. What do bird owners do to keep their birds out of a running Ceiling fan. That's a great question. Now, uh, do you know a supplier of a ceiling fan guard? Never heard of that. Well, most bird owners turn their ceiling fans off before allowing flighted birds out of their cages. Mm -hmm. Many also keep their birds' wings clipped so that they cannot gain the altitude necessary to fly up into a fan. I recommend a combination of both wing clipping and turning off the fans. The ceiling fan guards I've been able to locate are intended for commercial or school use. They're heavy, expensive, and wouldn't keep small birds from reaching the fan blades. But how about considering a bladeless fan? Uh, par parent Elise Negrin, who lives on Long Island, New York, reports excellent results from an air cleaning system she purchased from a company called Petiatric Supply. The unit replaces the blades on a ceiling fan and circulates and cleans the air in the room. So for some more information on that product, visit www.petiatric.com. Check it out. You know, it filters and it circulates the air and it fits right onto the ceiling fan fitting. Yeah, that's great. Well, that's all the time we have for questions, so send me your questions. Susan at PetLifeRadio.com. 
And I will try and answer them on a future segment of Wings and Things. And they could be silly questions, too. Oh, they can be silly questions, too. Hey, there's no question that's too silly. That's right. That's for sure. You know, just the one you don't ask is is the silliest one. But now I'm going to address one of the attributes that has made parrots so desirable. Talking. Most of us have seen various birds talking up a storm on television. Many of these birds are professionals who appear in bird shows at theme parks. The birds are accustomed to crowds and lots of hoopla going on around them. It's not real life. Real life is your bird chattering away and then clamming up the minute company arrives. Real life is your feathered friend picking up the very words you don't want your children repeating or incessantly imitating your burglar alarm siren. Friends and readers have told me about birds that have learned hundreds of words and phrases or sing songs all the way through. Irene Pepperberg's famous African gray, Alex, seems to have cognitive abilities as well. Alex recently passed away, but Alex certainly went a long way to letting us know how much birds actually understand. Bonnie Boy, a budgie who lives in a Long Island, New York convent, says, Did you say God bless you today? And many other phrases. What are some of the secrets of these super birds and their companion humans? Be patient. Some birds may take a year or more to speak. Your bird may even conceal the fact that he's learned to talk by only reciting words and phrases when you're not at home. Don't worry, he'll eventually slip up and start chattering when you're lurking in another room. Greet your bird. Whenever you walk into the room or return home, greet your bird with a phrase you want repeated. Do the same when you leave the house. My African gray parrot, Bert, says, I'll see you later whenever he hears me open the coat closet or whenever he perceives that I'm about to leave the house. Maybe it's just my footsteps are going a little faster. Maybe it's the fact that I'm wearing shoes. Or he just does knows the signs and he says, I'll see you later, very appropriately. Get electronic help. Supplement your own speech lessons with specially recorded training tapes and CDs to encourage your bird to learn to talk. Record your own tapes so the bird can respond to the sound of your voice. Leave the television or radio on when you're out of the house. Soap operas are a good choice because they have a lot of dialogue. Cartoons are birdie favorites. They seem to love the voices and sound effects and will often repeat them. My African greys do all the bomb noises and the laughing and it's really funny when you have your own little cartoon soundtrack going on at your house. Make it fun. Longtime parrot companion Barbara Landsberg advises making an audio tape of yourself talking and singing to your bird. Then tape the bird talking and singing as he begins to imitate you. Act like a lunatic, said Barbara. The birds love it. The birds will enjoy hearing you both banter back and forth. Create new tapes as you progress. And you know something funny about tapes and um, television and um, media? When your bird hears a bird on television, they'll know if it's a real bird or not. I, I notice with my birds, if it's just a human doing a bird voice, they don't react to it at all. If it's a real bird doing a bird voice, though, they sit up and take notice. Separation works. Avoid pairing your birds while speech training is in progress. Although there are exceptions, most paired birds will converse in bird speak instead of human language. Although, you know, my Amazons are so funny, sometimes they'll just get it going. The My African Grey and my Red Lord Amazon Bogart both do the whistles from Close Encounters of the Third Kind, that hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo, and one will do it, the other will pick it up, then they'll just do that back and forth. And the two African Greys, they, they're they working busily in their office every morning. One African Grey will ring the phone and the other one will say, hello. So, you know, they, they kind of do that, and it's, it's really, really funny, very cute. Hey, how about singing? When Cracker, my female double yellow head, wants me, she cries, Ma! She sounds so pitiful. I despaired of teaching her anything new until I saw how she reacted to my Edith Bunker-like singing. 
So go ahead, as Ratchet says. Come on, sing. Change the pitch of your voice. When your bird's eyes begin to dilate and he begins to vocalize with you, you've hit the right notes. You know, my birds kind of just do a and uh, maybe a little um, phrase or two from I left my heart in San Francisco. But I know Amazons that sing happy birthday all the way through. How about teaching your bird some useful information? Several Long Island Parrot Society members have taught their parrots their names, species, addresses, and phone numbers in case they ever get lost or stolen. It may take a while, but try to teach your bird something that will identify him in case of loss or theft. Listen to your bird. Do you hear the doorbell ring when you know nobody's there? Is the phone ringing while you're on it? The sounds may be coming from your feathered friend. Many birds have a talent for sound effects mimicking household noises. Pay attention to the sounds your bird picks up, and you'll be better equipped to encourage him to talk, sing, whistle, or imitate various sounds. Use positive reinforcement. When your bird learns a desirable word or phrase, reinforce it by repeating it frequently. Reward your bird with a special treat, a toy, or attention. Keep records. Keep a log of words and phrases as your bird learns them. Repeat them back to him every so often and make sure he retains his vocabulary. One reason we love our feathered friends so much is because they frequently communicate with us in our language. However, don't automatically assume that your bird will talk. Even though most hook-billed species have the ability to talk, ultimately the bird's choice. Love your pet for its quirks and personality, and consider speech an extra. You know, um, one time years ago I saw a funny ad in a newspaper. It was advertising parrots for sale, and it said, the sounds of the Amazon jungle in your own home. Well, you know what the Amazon jungle sounds like. I think we'd rather have them saying, hello, hello. It's really a lot of fun to um, have your bird speaking with you and speaking in your language. And they seem to enjoy the extra attention that it garners. But then again, you know, you love your bird for its personality and for being a bird. You can learn more about pet birds at monthly meetings of the Long Island Parrot Society. The Society meets the third Wednesday of each month at American Legion Post 94 in Babylon Village on Long Island, New York. The doors open at 6.30 p.m. and the program begins promptly at 8 p.m. It's like a mini bird show every month. Everyone is welcome. There is a small guest fee. Humans only, please. Leave your birds at home. They will not be admitted. For details and directions, visit www.liparrots.org. That's all we have time for now on this segment of Wings and Things. But send me your questions. Send me your funny bird stories. at Susan at PetLifeRadio.com. And we'll see you next time. Join us every week on Wings and Things with your host, Susan Chamberlain, and get a bird's eye view of everything there is to know about pet birds and how to make your frequent flyer a happy camper. Wings and Things, only on PetLifeRadio.com.